Hey everyone, so in this video, we will see what is Beeple in SOA. So this is one of the most uh, important uh, concept in SOA. So let's get started. So Beeple stands for Business Process Execution Language and uh, it is useful to uh, process or we can say write business logic into Oracle SOA. Okay, so let's create one project and understand that. Okay, so I'll just uh, click on this uh, file and I'll just create a new project or we can click, click on this and a new and application. So we'll create a SOA application. So search SOA and as you can see, you got here SOA application. Okay, so click on OK and uh, give some application name. So I'm giving just uh, test Beeple people app okay you can give it uh, whatever you want and uh, also we will, need, we will create a project okay so we'll give a project name as uh, test people project okay and uh, click on this and click on next and uh, yes as you can see you can create uh, the composite with people process and you want task and another things but uh, for now, we'll just simply create an empty, empty composite. If you want, then you can create with some people process and human tasks and all things. Okay, we'll see this all things in later. This is all kind of uh, components which we got, which we get into Oracle SOA. So we'll see that. So just create empty composite for now. Click on finish. And uh, uh, after that, your application and project will get created. So as you can see, you your project is got created. So in right side, if you click on this components, then you get all those uh, six components which you are getting on that particular window. Okay, and also you can get uh, so much technologies here. Okay, uh, in one video that is not possible to cover all the things, but yes, uh, we'll create a separate video if you want. Okay, so for now we'll just focus on the main thing of Beeple and how we can use Beeple into Oracle SOA uh, thing. Okay, so now uh, click on this uh, test Beeple project. So this we are in this uh, project uh, directory. Okay, so now just right click on this. And uh, before that, before that, let's create a schema first. So we'll that use that schema. Okay, so right click on this and just create a new schema. So click on this and uh, let's say uh, schema okay so uh, xml schema okay so click on xml schema and uh, click on okay and give some name so i'm giving just addition addition dot xst okay and uh, this uh, namespace is to uniquely uh, just kind of identifier uh, you can give some uh, website name and give some slashes uh, or some something like some project name, some application name or something. Okay, for now, uh, don't worry about this. We'll see that later. Okay, so now uh, we have uh, one uh, element here. Okay, so now uh, we can add one uh, another element from here. Okay, so uh, we, we, we want some request element here. So let's say request and uh, give some sequence. So I'll and choose sequence from here and uh, I'll uh, paste or I will connect that sequence to this request and we want two uh, variables as a input side so we'll input two variables okay and we'll give the name as num1 and num2 okay num2 okay and also we need to define the data type so right click on that and uh, and you need to go in the set type okay so set type and search for integer so access the integer is the type and similarly for this set type integer and integer okay sorry integer okay now uh, we want we want uh, another element so click on this and add one more element to here and this will be our response okay and uh, now we want one sequence and then we want another uh, output variables 
or output element so we have added element 3 give name as uh, output or output okay that is fine now give some data type again so i will give integer again okay integer and yeah that is our access key if you want some to see this source code and click on this source button and as you can see we have successfully uh, created a uh, access access schema okay so now we will use this schema to perform our task okay so now just go back to your project and uh, here uh, right click on this click on insert click on people process and you can give uh, any people process name you want i'll say addition people process okay okay and as you can see in the upper side you get two people versions 2.0 and 1.0 in 2.0 there is some more functionals uh, added and some more specification added to the upgraded version as compared to 1.1 so don't worry about that you can read a documentation for that okay just for now uh, uh, we will uh, not require anything we we'll just uh, select people 2.0 for now and uh, here for namespace you can add whatever namespace you want but uh, ensure that for uh, different schemas you don't need to uh, add a, sing a similar kind of namespaces okay uh, otherwise you will get error at a runtime okay so this is the thing and uh, yeah and in in, a, in template type you can select web services or so, suppose if you are using rest services then you can select rest but for now we'll use soap service so we'll select web service and uh, in template we will use synchronous because we want a uh, reply as well so right reply also so if you'll we'll select asynchronous then that is something like uh, fire and forgot kind of thing okay so we also want some reply so we'll select synchronous process and just uh, select this exposes a soap service so we will uh, expose uh, our that uh, thing in as a soap service okay so this is the thing why we are selecting okay so click on this soap service and in soap we need to select input variable and output variable okay uh, before that for this transaction thing uh, there are three things like required required new and non supported so this will help when we create a large application and uh, like multiple transactions we are doing then if we want uh, uh, this process to uh, to uh, use new transaction or to create new transaction then we can select requires new otherwise this required is fine okay so we are just uh, selecting this required as of now then as input we'll select our schema so click on that and uh, select a request variable okay and as a response we want that response variable so this is response okay so this is the thing now click on okay and uh, we have successfully created our uh, composite okay now this will give a response back uh, an addition of that two numbers uh, so this will not give addition because double click on this we haven't added logic yet right so we need to add some logic into this that's why we use people process or people okay so as you can see if we we'll double click on on uh, this double click on this then we'll get this kind of structure so as you can see uh, we have re uh, receive so if you'll click on this then as you can see we have uh, and one, one one variable which is uh, input variable okay and another variable which will be by default created so that is output variable okay so if you want to see variables then you click on this and go in variables and as you can see we have two default variables input variable and output variable this will because uh, this because uh, of we have selected that uh, schema input and output variable okay so this uh, our variables got created now we got a uh, we got a request okay now we want uh, to add those numbers so we'll use assign activity so click on this components and uh, search for assign activity so here is assign uh, paste that assign activity here and uh, assign give us some name so assign addition i'm giving okay and okay so now click on this and uh, if we'll say uh, output variable we want 
sum of the two variables. So uh, expand this and uh, click on this output variable. And here we want addition of the two numbers. So expand this input variable. Click on this and give addition sign and click on this. Okay, so now as you can see, we have added some logic that we want uh, addition of these two variables as our output. So click on OK, click on apply, click on OK. Okay, so now our composite is already uh, already done. Now we will just deploy that and we'll just test our composite. Okay, so now just click on this and right click on this and just deploy. So uh, click on next and uh, click on next. Also, you can select if there is an error, uh, overridden composite, then you can just select this uh, and uh, yeah, that is the thing. Now click on next and uh, we have our integrated server. If you want me to create a separate video for how to create an integrated server and how to configure that, please put your comments below and comment section. I'll definitely create if I'll get some high response. Okay, so click on next for now and uh, Yes, we have that default folder there. So we'll deploy our composite onto that folder. So click on next, click on finish. And uh, as you can see, our uh, composite is getting uh, deployed. So yeah, just wait some seconds and we'll have our composite into our server. Okay. So yeah, that is the thing. And uh, I have already started my server, so that's why uh, I my server is already running so let's let me open my uh, enterprise manager I'm just refreshing the enterprise manager for now okay and uh, it is taking some time okay so now go in this panel target navigation panel uh, click on this show infra and uh, click on this show of folders and in default folder click on this and uh, click on this deployed composites and as you can see we got our uh, composite here test people project click on this and uh, yeah now you can test that with this button so click on this test button and uh, we have to pass uh, input thing so click on this payload and as you can see we got some uh, two numbers which we need to add so suppose i am passing 12 as a number one and 13 as number two so we are hoping we'll we need we need to get uh, 25 as an output so to test service click on this test web service button And as you can see, we got request successfully. Uh, so uh, go below. And as you can see, we got a 25 as our output. So our logic is looking fine, right? Uh, if you want to see the process flow, then uh, go back. Okay. Or we, ca we can click on this launch flow trace. And uh, click on this people. Okay, so as you can see, uh, click on this receive input. So as you can see, it is uh, getting two numbers. Okay, 12 and 13. And then what it is doing, it is uh, updating the output variable. It is uh, adding those numbers. And uh, as you can see this, uh, then the, it will, it is adding those two numbers and giving us an output. Okay, so that is the thing. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, yeah, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.